we're rolling. Not that much time has passed since the clutch video, but I've continued to put shit onto the block. If you look over here, I don't think I filmed putting the intake manifold on. I don't think I filmed any of that stuff. I don't remember. I don't know, it wasn't in the last video. So intake manifold's on, uh, fuel rail, I threw the injectors in, blah, 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 blah. Little pieces like this coolant hose, or I don't know, it's not a hose, but thing for the coolant. This is one big bracket that goes on the side of the block, has the alternator, power steering pump, I put a new power steering pump on it. Water pump, this tensioner, tensioner for the AC belt, because the compressor goes right there. This is how it's supposed to come from factory. Conveniently enough, I have a stock version of that car <laughs> sitting right here. So you have this plastic guy coming off of the block breather, or whatever you want to call it. Um, it goes to a T, one end loops around the block and goes into the turbo inlet pipe. The other end just goes onto the intake manifold. So get rid of all that shit. I have a 10 a.m. fitting right there and it'll go straight to a catch can so that's cool that integrated engineering makes that because we're not using the clutch fan there's no pulley here anymore so the stock size belt obviously won't work because usually it'd go around a pulley now it doesn't so we measured i got the wrong size originally went back and got this one this if you're building an 058 block and you're getting rid of your clutch fan you'll need a 48 inch belt it's five ribs but i'll put this on and then another thing you may or may not know if you're ever doing a serpentine belt in your 18 this little notch put a 17 wrench on it and that's how you can move it instead of doing it like by hand or something weird you can do it by hand it's not hard but make sure that's on slowly that and I have a serpentine belt now if you got too big of a belt if you look at that gap right there, like between there and there, if you got too big of a belt, if that's bottomed out, you want a slightly smaller belt because chances are there's probably not going to be a lot of tension on it. Like you want there to be some space there, but that's about it. The, this is going to be one like eight minute clip, one long clip, but the turbo, I went to order feed and return for oil lines for it. And it was gonna be like $100. And I was like, well, let's see how much it is if I just make them. Cause I know like it's easy to make AN, line, or AN lines and put the hose ends on. It costs more to just buy the supplies than it would have been to have, uh, what's the company? ATP Turbo, just make them. There's someone over there, no. Squirrel. Um, but I bought them anyway, just because I thought, why not make them, give me something to do. Uh, most people run 10 a.n. for the oil drain in like literally every car, I'm pretty sure, and 4 a.n. for the feed. And this is a journal bearing turbo, you don't need a restrictor. I don't really know what I'm talking about, but I think with ball bearing turbos, sometimes you need a restrictor, because it's bad to have too much oil on them. Don't quote me on that, I don't know. But I know I don't have to worry about that. Um, on the oil filter housing, that is a replacement of the stock one. The stock one, you can see, I don't know like what thread that is or anything, but the one that's on it now is for a 4AN hose end. So that's where my oil feed will come from. That's where it comes from stock as well. 
but now it's just a different size thread so I can run AN lines, which are right there. That little black piece I got from Precision as well. It's a fucking, it's this big and it's $25, but same thing. 10 AN, whoops. Threads right on. I just clocked the turbo the way it sat before. The drain line would have been like an inch from the exhaust manifold, which probably wouldn't have been the best thing for it. I don't know how heat resistant this stuff is, but having it literally right there, I don't think would have been good. So now it'll pretend it goes out that way. Now it'll just loop out slightly and it'll give it some clearance so it's not right next to all that heat. Uh, if you're still watching this, I got this as well. This bolts on to the oil pan. This is the same flange that the stock oil return line is, like from a KO3 or a KO4. So this bolts right onto your pan, and obviously it's 10 a.m., so I just put, you know, cut the hose to whatever length I want, and it'll thread right on down there. Did I miss anything, Vince? No. That's pretty much it. Um, I guess I will film us. Well, I guess I'll hire you to film me making these now. I haven't got my first paycheck yet. <laughs> I think you forgot or something. I'll... We average getting about 20 views per video right now. <laughs> so there is no YouTube money, but uh, if there ever is, I'll be sure to give you some. <laughs> Actually, we'll be street racing people on one. I mean, uh, Pour that out. <laughs> I plan to collect a lot of money doing so. So I'll just, I'll throw some of your way for the cameraman. Sounds good. But all right, let's, uh, let's make the, I guess feed first. And cut it. Hose end on there. And then we're gonna attach it to the line. We'll mock up roughly where it's going to run and then we will cut it. Okay, I have all that stuff connected. It's gonna run around the back of the head. Vince gave me this little Thing. You don't know what it's from? I think it's from 240 or something. <laughs> oh god, Nissan parts. <laughs> that cool little guy, we'll keep it in place and then it'll go straight into this. So I'm gonna mark it. That's fine, that gives me some slack. So I'm gonna do it right there. And then I'm just gonna mark it like that. That's where I'm gonna cut it. This is in there just enough to hold it. Obviously, you don't want to crush the line, but tape is where we want to cut it. The tape prevents it from fraying. I don't think it's that big of an issue with the stainless line, but the black nylon that I use for my fuel system, if you would cut it without wrapping it up, it would fray horribly because it's just like fabric, but. All right, let's make sure this is tight. It feels tight. The return looks weird. I'm not crazy about it, but if it went straight down, it would practically rub against one of the hottest parts of the engine bay. So I don't want to do that. It's going to come out 45 and then go into the pan. But when you're standing in the bay, I don't think you'll really be able to see it anyway. I don't know. I'm not really worried about it, but feed looks awesome. Last thing, 
I finally got a box, so I'm official now. Instead of working out of like three separate mini toolboxes, I finally have all my stuff together. Torx, triple squares for B5 axles, and everything else. Wiring shit. Miscellaneous.